Happiness is having a wad full of cash and watching your local coin shop dealer open his door. <laughs> Thanks for watching Yankee Stacking. I really appreciate it. I also appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up on this video. Just, just take a moment right down there on your uh, device, whatever it is, just hit the thumbs up. It really helps get the word out. We're gonna answer that question. What should silver stackers not do right now in, in just a minute? Actually, Tim Marshner, my local coin shop dealer, is gonna answer that question. Um, but before I get there, I wanna show you some of my pickups. Many of you know, I have been focusing a little bit more on gold recently. I think from a price standpoint, gold is a good buy. From a potential standpoint, I think silver is the way to go. So price for gold, potential for silver. I think the potential actually for both is pretty high, but I had to pick up some silver and I did get 10 American Silver Eagles, 2021s. The uh, last of its design on the reverse. So definitely if you haven't gotten 2021s, <laughs> now's the time to pick them up. But I did want to get some gold. So I got two pieces. One was this gorgeous four nines fine, 24 karat gold, one ounce Canadian maple leaf. That is one of the more iconic images on all bullion from around the world. Okay, I, I just love the maple leaf. Some people don't like the obverse. Hey, let's show a few seconds of love to the queen. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> no, I'm serious. The queen is fine. Uh, and this is just a, a beautiful coin. So definitely uh, wanted to build on the uh, gold bullion from around the world. In fact, that is a quest of mine now to try to get a one ounce piece of gold from all the major mints from around the world. And so the other gold coin I got was the South African Krugerrand. Okay, this is also a very historic one ounce gold piece. It has the former president of South Africa, Paul Kruger on it. And then on the reverse, oh, I'm slipping it like an American, here we go, <laughs> is the Springbok. Okay, that is the uh, national animal for South Africa. And, you know, it's a 1979. And, and the reason I say that this is such a historic bullion coin is because this was the first retail gold coin that was marketed throughout the world. In fact, I remember my dad saying, you know, Son, I really love silver, mostly constitutional silver. And he said, you know, I'd love a gold coin. I'd really love to get a gold coin. My dad didn't come from means. That was a, a big deal for him to say that. But the, the gold coin that he was talking about was the Krugerrand because that's all the bullion gold there was. I mean, for a retail investor, that's it, okay? This came out in 1967. And we're talking the 70s, like late 70s. Uh, 1979 is the date on this. And it just kind of reminds me of that uh, time period when I was a kid. But uh, this also was the year that the first maple came out. Okay, 1979. So basically, this led the way, the Krugerrand. This was the gold of choice. This is what you got when you were saying, I want a gold coin. And I wanted one of these. I wanted it from a maybe a somewhat of a sentimental standpoint, but I thought it would be really cool to have the gold coin that I remember my father talking about many years ago. So that's why I got it. And, you know, can you see the difference? I mean, of course you can, right? The 24 karat, this is 22 karat, okay? It has copper in it, 8.33% of the makeup of this coin is copper. Okay, the rest is gold. It is, it is a full one ounce of pure gold in total, and that's why you can see the size difference, and there is a weight difference, an overall weight difference. Um, there's no silver in it. It's very similar to the uh, American Gold Eagle that has 
a little bit of copper and a little bit of silver to make it 22 karat gold. Something that Tim told me about the um, Krugerrand is that you will rarely see a scratched up Krugerrand. <laughs> Not because, you know, people take extra care of these, but because that added copper gives it some durability and it doesn't scratch as easy as this 24 karat gold Canadian maple leaf does. All right, speaking of Tim, I think it's time that we listen to Tim and hear how he answers the question, what should silver stackers not be doing right now? How, how has the silver sales been? Excellent. I mean, every day we sell out of something. You know, whatever I put in the cabinet is usually gone by the end of the day. Um, Demand is high, huh? Yeah. Saturday at 100 one ounce bars, they lasted maybe two hours. Um, but uh, I had some 100 ounce bars. I have, I still had four left. I had six, so two went out yesterday. Um, Eagles, I had to get another 100 because I ran out of those. Um, and they, I still have uh, quite a few maple leaves. Maple leaves are, uh, they're my bargain. Yeah, my silver bargain. That's, that's Silver I, bargain? Yeah, oh, is that from the uh, monster box you bought, right? I bought another one. You bought a second monster box? Yeah. And wow. um, they're all after 2014. So they're all the with the radial lines. Um, yes, which security is, feature. It's made a huge difference in the quality, I think. You think? Yeah. What, what we dates? We just don't see any of those that are spotted. What date is the uh, monster box? Man, this is crazy. Uh, 2015. Wow. And I've gone through maybe a third of it. So I still have two thirds left. Are, are you getting Yankee stacking customers? Uh, from all over the country. Yes. Really? Yeah. And they're, they're a great group of people. You know, some uh, good people, uh, good, mm -hmm. friendly, and mm. um, intelligent people. I'm not surprised. They are. No, they are. It's a great really community. Are. Demand is high. Seems supply has been is limited, uh, definitely compared to when I first started stacking. A big, big difference. And a lot of craziness in the markets. What should silver stackers not be doing right now? Uh, there, there's a lot of shortage and uh, in various things like the, the bars are really hard to get, get a hold of. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think this, the stackers, when they call and ask prices, I think they're a little surprised that the premiums are so high. Honestly, I think the paper market will catch up to the supply and demand in the physical market uh, before the premiums come down. So the gap will narrow, but you think it's not that the physical price well, is going to drop, it's the paper price that's going to rise to meet? Yeah, I think the paper price will come up, but uh, mm. the premiums aren't going to come down. And it, it's it's a true shortage of silver, but it goes all the way back to the mines. Mm -hmm. You know, because so much of the silver comes out of byproduct mining, um, I don't think that's going to change in a hurry. It'll require economies to get stronger and there, you know, greater need for housing and, and wow. um, industrial use. Um, you know, there's not a lot of maintenance going on in industrial buildings because most of them are in a lot of states like Boston, they're, mm -hmm. they're closed. And yeah, in the city of Boston. It's all over yeah, Boston. in Massachusetts, yeah. Um, wow. So there's not a lot of maintenance, not a lot of construction. Um, you know, if you don't have construction, you don't have a great need for copper. A lot of the silver comes out of copper mines comes out of zinc mines, nickel mines, and um, there's just not that demand there to keep those mines open. But we, we are seeing inflated prices in copper, and, lumber, and food, and a lot yeah, of things. That, that's seems. because there's no supply. If you, yeah. you know, if you, when mm -hmm. you slowly close down all the mines because your economy's shut down, uh, it takes a, quite a while to ramp up, mm -hmm. get things back to whatever the production was beforehand. So what should silver stackers not do? I wouldn't. I just wouldn't be worried too worried about the because you're buying at this price. Whatever the premiums are, you're buying at this price. Okay, mm -hmm. um, that's going to change, and I don't. I think it'll be. You know, it, the paper market will catch up before the premiums come down. So, so the, should that? they be waiting, uh, I mean, holding I mean, off I mean, on wait. silver? No, I, buy whatever you're looking for. Mm. Um, we still are having trouble getting the bars. Okay. Yeah. Um, American Eagles, because the mint's going to shut down, what, in April, I guess, for the whole month, but oh. while they're tooling up for the new 2021 design. Oh, they, oh, that's right. Uh, they shut down next month? Yeah, I think, well, that's what I've been told. They're, they're going to be shutting down for about a month. 
but um, mm. we're, we're not seeing a lot of supply out there yet. I mean, the wholesalers are not getting all the monster boxes they have on order. So um, those premiums won't be coming down anytime soon. Now we're selling the 2021 Eagle for um, $36. Uh, it has been as high here as 39, but wow. I'm still seeing high prices, very high prices on the um, online online dealers. Oh, I know they're they're through the roof still. Yeah. Uh, and I've had uh, been lucky. I've had a couple of monster boxes come in mm -hmm. uh, for the Maple Leafs, and I still have um, probably 10 tubes of those. But Damn that's you know unless. Individuals bring that stuff in. And you got a bar over here, too. Yeah, uh, yeah I have, I have <laughs> one more bar. You know, I hesitate to put the oh, bars out because they go out the door so fast. Nobody's asking for the uh, Yankee Stack <laughs> stickers anymore, are they? Uh, yeah, actually, they are. <laughs> uh, I got to replenish you. <laughs> ah, okay. So you do have a couple more. Yeah, and when these are gone, I don't Two know more. when I'm be, going to be getting more. That's the problem. Mm. You know, the bars are. Um, there are a few and far in between. I don't know uh, when we're going to get another shipment of bars. Mm -hmm. I know my wholesaler has uh, thousands of ounces on order, but mm -hmm. they're just not coming in. Man. And I had, you know, a hundred of them on Saturday. Yep. They were gone in less than two hours. Um, but, you know, I'm putting more eagles out every day. And yeah, then the next day I come in and put more out. Because they, they <laughs> sell. The eagles sell very well, yes. even at the high price. And I think more and more stackers are looking around to see what the online price is. Mm -hmm. um, it's not great for you know less than less than a tube. I think it's it's still going to be pretty high, and even the monster box prices mm -hmm. um, are long delivery. You know they may buy a monster box, but then they you know they, some of them are charging the shipping. And they're waiting a month or maybe two months to get yep. them. Uh, but I don't think that's going to change. You seeing people walking in and selling much? Not as much as before. Not as much as before. One of the best reasons to stack is to have something to fall back on when you need it. And who knows if all these jobs are going to recover. You know, a lot of people who are working in construction um, may not have a job because they've opened up the borders mm -hmm. and brought a lot of people in. And, they're, you know, these people are willing to work for low wages. Nothing, practically. And they're yeah. willing to do grunt work for mm -hmm. very little money. Um, it's just, I don't think the administration thought through opening the borders because it's going to bring a lot of people in to take uh, menial jobs. <clears throat> and that's that's not good for the economy. So what about a tube? American Eagles. Uh, what years are they? Is just the 2021s? Yeah, the latest? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to get the gold. But I, silver, I, got, I can't walk out with, without some silver. I'll get an American Eagles. I have a question for you, though. Yeah. Have we seen the bottom? Oh. Relative bottom, yeah. Relative bottom is if the long-term trend is up and you that get was... a drop of $50, yeah. it's coming back to the long-term trend. Okay. I think that's what's going to happen. Yep. And mm. there would be, you know, depending on what the, the big guys with lots of money down there on Wall Street do, <laughs> we're going to see ups and downs. But I think the, the long-term trend is def definitely positive. Have you checked out um, Wall Street Silver? On Reddit, I have not. No. Oh my word! They they just broke through. I think forty thousand subscribers. It's growing like crazy. Seems like there's this, uh, you know, uh, like an awakening. Like the millennials have gotten woke around silver, and it's just incredible to see. People are excited. Young younger people, younger than us, are excited about silver. I just hope people take their stimulus money that's coming and buy some precious metals with it. <laughs> you know, it's uh, around here. That's what they do. That's what they do. Yeah. Well, there you have it, Tim Marshner. He is a great guy, and I hope you enjoyed his uh, insights into precious metals. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Hit the bell button, and as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.